Hey guys, Dr. Betts here coming out with a fantastic chemistry video and today I'm going to talk about bond rotation. Rotation of a single bond. No sense waiting, let's get into it. Now, we all know what we're looking at here. We're looking at a sp3 orbital here and an sp3 orbital here and they're going to overlap. Okay, And here they are overlapping. Now, this bond is allowed to freely rotate. This bond is allowed to freely rotate. Sigma bonds can freely rotate unless they're encumbered by a pi bond. Okay, we're going to see that in a minute. So take a look at, if you will, this hydrogen right here. Okay, let's call that hydrogen 1, 2, and 3. If you look at the drawing beside it, look at the drawing beside it, what has happened here is we've moved carbon 2, or sorry, carbon uh, hydrogen 1, which is right here, is now right here. 1, 3, 2. Basically, we've moved hydrogen 1 back a little bit. Hydrogen 3 has come forward a little bit and rotated up, and hydrogen 1 has, has gone backwards a little bit. Hydrogen 2 now falls down here. It's rotating. It's literally going around in a circle. Okay? Sigma bonds, or single bonds essentially, can do this. Single bonds, sp3 hybridized atoms, can do this. All right? Now, it's um, known as free rotation, by the way. Now, double bonds can't do this. Triple bonds can't do it either. What happens here is we have our sigma bond right here. We definitely have a sigma bond. But now the pi bond is adding rigidity to the molecule. It's adding a rigid structure that prevents the rotation of the bond. Okay? So if you want if this bond here wants to rotate, the pi bond is going to rotate too with it. And essentially just essentially it's just going to flip over. That's all it's going to do. Okay, it's just going to flip over. All right. So this thing here, if this sigma bond, the single bond, tries to rotate, the entire molecule is going to flip over. Think of it as a bicycle tire. Bicycle tire has one, um, um, what are they called, axle, I guess you'd call it, that goes through it, and the tire spins around that axle. If you put a broomstick through the spokes of the wheel, the, now, the, now not the wheel won't turn, the bike will turn around the wheel, right? Because you have two points of rotation in the same uh, wheel, it's not going to, it's not going to move as freely anymore. Okay. That's kind of a way to think of it. Now, here's just another slide to kind of hammer it home. You are, you cannot rotate a double bond, uh, freely. You have to pay a price. There's usually a chemical price you have to pay. You have to treat it with chemical to make it rotate. So now Here's, a, here's an example of a double bond that's in the cis orientation. So the two hydrogens are facing the same direction. They're both facing backwards. If it tries to rotate out of, uh, if, it, if the bond tries to rotate about the sigma bond, you actually have to break the pi bond and there's an energy price to pay for that. It won't just do it. You have to give it something. You have to give it a catalyst. You have to give it an acid or maybe even heat might do it, but it's not going to do it on its own. So you have, there's a price to be paid. So it's a take home message. Single bonds can rotate, double bonds cannot. If a double bond tries to rotate, the entire molecule simply just flips over. All right? Oops. I'm sorry, I want to talk a little bit about that. Sorry. There we go. Oh, I did it again, guys. I'm so sorry. There we go. Double bonds cannot rotate. Compounds that differ in how the substituents are arranged around the double bond can be isolated and separated because they're different. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, with that, I want to leave it here. We're going to come back in the next video and talk about isomerization. So with that, I'm going to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you in the next video very soon.